Hi everyone, and welcome to Biology Professor. Today we're going to talk about histones and DNA packaging, and specifically how those things, histones and DNA packaging, answer this question. How does DNA fit inside the nucleus? Now if we think about DNA, and for this example let's talk about human DNA, the human genome has approximately 3 billion nucleotides. So that's a pretty long, complex molecule. If the human genome was stretched out end to end, it would be about 1.8 meters or about 5 feet long. So this is a very, very large amount of material. So again, how does it fit inside the nucleus? And not only how does it fit, but how does it fit in, a, in an organized way so that specific genes can be found when the cell needs access to them? Well, the answer is a highly regulated process of DNA packaging. So let's talk about how that process works. We know that DNA, at its most basic level, is a double helix, and the double helix will wrap around proteins called histones. And histones are important for more than just being a medium for the DNA to wrap around. They're actually highly important for regulation. That is, these proteins called histones have parts that are called tails that stick out even after the DNA has wrapped around, and depending on how those tails are modified, what kinds of groups are added onto those tails, that can effectively silence a gene, keeping it from being uh, transcribed, or it can make that gene available for transcription, thereby turning the gene on. So the histones themselves play essential regulatory roles. Now, when the DNA, when the double helix, wraps around the histone proteins, it looks kind of like this. Now, this, each one of these orange dots is a group of histone proteins that has a few loops of the double helix wrapped around them. So this is actually quite a lot of DNA, uh, and we're looking at it uh, not as close up as we are in this view here. Now, you can see from this appearance that when the double helix wraps around the histone proteins, it, is, it gives an appearance of beads on a string, and that's how this is often referred to. So here, the beads would be groups of histone proteins with the double helix wrapped around them, and the string would be areas of double helix between the various groupings of histones. And overall, these, each one of these little beads is called a nucleosome. So here we have many, many nucleosomes. Now, the tails of the histone proteins, in addition to being uh, used for regulation, one of the ways in which they are regulatory is that the tails actually interact with each other. And so depending on how those tails have been modified, whether the genes in this area need to be on or off in regards to transcription, those tails can interact and actually cause all of these nucleosomes to wrap up together to form essentially loops that are known as thick chromatin fibers. Then thick chromatin fibers are further compacted into a type of packaging known as looped domains. And this further compaction happens when the cell is about to undergo mitosis. And then there's even 
further packaging and compaction of the DNA from Luke's domains into what we know of as the compact metaphase chromosome. So this is what we see on the metaphase plate in the middle of mitosis. And so you can see how much goes in to packaging a huge amount of nucleotides, a huge long molecule of the DNA double helix going through all of these different steps to get to a compact chromosome. And what is especially interesting is that this process, as it goes on again and again in multiple cells, you have specific genes that are always in the same place in this packed chromosome. And the fact that this process can be done again and again and again, and the genes always end up in the same physical location on the compact chromosome, indicates that this overall process is highly precise. And as a result of being highly precise, that means that it is also highly repeatable. So that each time a cell is gearing up for mitosis and it's going to go through this process, you're always going to get genes being in the same place on the same chromosome. And genes being in the same place relative to each other in this nucleosome formation when the cells are not going through mitosis actively. So that is it for today's video on histones and DNA packaging. Thank you for watching Biology Professor. I hope you learned a lot.